So we decided this was the place we wanted to, to be, mm -hmm. and the lake was the big draw uh, for that. In the heart of Washington State, nestled amidst the enchanting Cascade Mountains, lies a hidden gem that time seems to have forgotten. This is Soap Lake, a place steeped in mystique and healing legends. Its waters, rich in mineral content, have drawn people from far and wide for centuries, seeking solace and rejuvenation. Once a bustling resort town, Soap Lake became a mecca for those seeking relaxation and a respite from the outside world. But beneath the surface, Soap Lake holds secrets as deep as its waters. Stories of mysterious healing powers and supernatural occurrences have become part of its rich tapestry. Whispers of miraculous recoveries and unexplained phenomena have woven themselves into the fabric of this tight-knit community. But what about the science? Well, it's simple, really. The lake disrupts the natural environment at which the bacterium survives. You can lead to the death of many diseases such as Berger's disease or Raymond's disease. Many cures for this very simple medicine. It's years and years ago when the sanitariums and, um, you know, McKay, the hospital that's here, the hospital, public hospital district that's here, um, opened up as a, a healing facility for um, having people go into the lake. These are veterans from World War I. Um, to heal their Burgess disease and some of the other things. This was pre-antibiotics, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it worked, and people flocked here from all over. Um, historically, our website also has um, data that's been collected from um, probably about 70 or 80 years of research data. Um, showing the diminishment from the very first list of minerals, elements on each layer to, um, I think the Conservancy did our last study in 2020. At the north end of the lake, there's a deep lake, which is, uh, has been 90 feet. And the research that's been done, this is a highly, highly researched lake by scientists. Um, it's layered so that the layers haven't mixed uh, in all that time because the minerals are heavy and so there's a, uh, an, an immense mud that's highly mineralized and then the layers have um, uh, more, because minerals are heavy, more mineralization uh, as you go deeper. It's an ancient mineral lake. It has no inlet on the surface or outlet on the surface. And it's part, it's the furthest most, most south lake in a, a chain of seven lakes. Um, and, the high, and the most highly mineralized. Now, as new chapters unfold, and the world begins to rediscover the enchantment of Soap Lake, its past and present intertwine, promising a journey like no other. Today, Soap Lake stands as a testament to resilience, where the echoes of the past merge with the vitality of the present, inviting a new generation 
to experience its wonders. As the sun casts its golden glow upon so plague today, the passage of time has not been without its challenges. The mineral content that once made Soap Lake legendary is now facing a decline. At this point, the top layer is um, somewhat freshened because of the intervention um, that the Bureau of Reclamation, when the dam was built, this has become a Most of the lakes in this area are managed as reservoirs, actually, and going north on uh, this chain of lakes, uh, Banks Lake and some of the other lakes are um, uh, basically reservoirs at this point from the Bureau of Reclamation. Yeah, if you look at the, uh, the data here, it's, it's, it's very clear to, uh, to, 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 to find the answer. Uh, the first box, as you see here, is highlighted in yellow. This box indicates the 2003 metrics uh, at 23 meters. We can plainly see that, uh, let's look at sodium for a real second. It says 61,600 um, uh, parts, per, parts per thousand, probably. And uh, we can see there's a slight decline over the years. It's a fluctuation, it's not a total decline, but we can see between 2005 and 2018, there's a huge drop off. Now, 2020 does show a slight recovery there, but the numbers are still significantly less than our, um, our 2003 versions. Uh, you can pick any, any one of these metals here or minerals. Uh, let's look at phosphorus in red here. It, it, beginning at 1990.4 in 2003 and we had a slight increase but then we saw decrease and a further decrease by 2018. There's been slight bounce back but again comparatively speaking it's been a huge degradation. Now uh, I can go through all of these numbers with you but I, I hope you guys uh, can, can, can go on the lake.org and view the information there for yourself and gather your own information. Uh, uh. The Bureau of Reclamation gets a lot of, the Bureau of Recl Reclamation is um, responsible at a federal level for this particular project. And we feed a lot of, we grow a lot of food for a lot of places because of the miles of canals that have been built around this area. But it also um, changes the um, environment here. So the water, is, the water is put into canals and siphons, meaning that they buried this huge, huge, um, which will potentially be filled with water you can fill, you can put semis in it, okay, and covered it up. And instead of um, putting that under the lake, because the thousands and thousands of miles of canals run on the east side and then run from that, north, just north of the lake, underneath and go down the west side and then down to um, the new areas are down to uh, um, south of I-90, you know, the Yakima area. Mm -hmm. So they're still building that canal area, canals leak. Not because they're broken, although sometimes they are and they can repair them, but, you know, it's not the same as um, a river. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's been a big influence. The the fact that this has been a project that has been tried to be, you know, people playing God to try to um, 
bring water it's you know our history as humans the romans the chinese you know we've been doing this and our project is the department of interior bureau of reclamation it's been done in colorado feeding you know and the colorado river is very small now um, it's been done in california with taking water from mono lake to los angeles um, mono lake um, is an outstanding resource water in California. And it's a model for us because our organization has applied for the outstanding resource water um, uh, protections for Soap Lake. And we're the first in the state, along with three parts of rivers that the, uh, uh, are the first in the state. So, the Bureau of Reclamation holds some responsibility for the freshening of this lake. Um, and hopefully they'll, the federal government will recognize that. And uh, actually they do recognize it, but recognize it for the purposes of um, uh, protecting the lake as well at this point. In addition to the declining mineral content, Soap Lake is grappling with yet another pressing issue, dwindling water levels. The lake used to be much bigger than it is now, okay? Um, some of the town and the homes and the downtown area, the water used to be um, well, historically, there are photographs that show it uh, up to Main Street. Well, you can clearly see the water of the soap lake is starting right over here. And Main Street is this red building way over here. So back in the day, the water reached that red building. And now it's way over here, as you can see. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, a Main Street. Main Street. That's up quite a bit. So over the years, it's been um, uh, lowered. But my personal opinion is um, we need to stop taking water out of the lake. We need to. Um, there are seven interception wells that the Bureau has put in around the lake that are shallow wells that pump the shallow groundwater from excess irrigation, okay? The, the irrigation that is not sucked up into the plants, but sinks down into a shallow groundwater that because Soap Lake is, it's sort of the bathtub drain. We are the lowest elevation from everything around. Um, so that all that excess irrigation water is intercepted by those pumps and there's three at the um, uh, south end, three more um, at the uh, east. There's a couple that are no longer used that are at the north end between Lake Lenore and Soap Lake and they're no longer used because they're dry. Okay, um, so if if those pumps um, are not attended to by persons rather than a program or persons watching the program and watching how it impacts the lake, um, too much pumping will be done. Um, and, um, and too much could let the lake lower, okay, and dry, too little could freshen it even more. So it needs to be, um, it's been automated the last, uh, I think since the 70s. 72, there was a Bureau of Reclamation contract transferring um, the management 
of it to what's called the irrigation districts here. And this particular area is the, Quin the Quincy Columbia Basin Irrigation District that manages those pumps. So uh, we need to have more careful monitoring. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, concerned citizens swung into action to begin the process of declaring the lake an outstanding resource water. Um, the outstanding resource water <clears throat> application that is a state program that we've applied for is um, part of a federal program of the Department of Interior. Uh, so most states that adopt and opt into that can do protections for um, waters within their state. Uh, we're in the process of the public comment beginning pretty soon. And uh, so our website on the home page has an application. It's got everything on it that has to do with a copy of the application, a copy of the acceptance letter. We meet the criteria for Tier 3B of the Washington State Outstanding Research Water uh, Program. And uh, we're about to begin and being the first, we've had to set up all the rules for that, rules being processes for the state and RCWs and those kinds of things. So it's been a learning process for all of us. This passionate committee would advocate for the preservation of soap lake mineral content and endeavors to reverse the declining water levels. Their collective efforts would include exploring sustainable water management strategies implementing conservation measures, and raising awareness about the importance of preserving Soap Lake's unique qualities. And, um, starting in July, we have public comment beginning. And uh, it's related to the public comment for um, meeting these three criteria that we meet. Um, for the lake, and it's pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. So, thelake.org, visit the home page and keep up with it, and you'll see how you can do this and how to contact us if you have questions, uh, or the uh, uh, Department of Ecology website as well uh, of the state. Join us in the mission to preserve Soap Lake's heritage and safeguard its healing waters. Your voice matters. Your actions count. Together, we create a legacy that will endure for generation to come. However, if we fail to act, the fate of Soap Lake hangs in the balance. It stands at a precipice, teetering between its current state of beauty and the looming threat of degradation. So my, the worst case scenario, based on the studies that have been done with each year, minerals depleted on every level, the top layer still mineralized, but not the diversity, not the uh, amounts, of elements and you know it's gonna start turning over uh, is what some people think my personal opinion based on some of the scientific um, studies that project into that question you've asked what what about the future um, some people have said well it's gonna freshen it'll freshen I don't think so I don't think it's going to freshen. I think it's going to be uh, uh, filled with algae. It's going to be a problem. It's going to it's going to be a mess, and then uh, swamp life. It's not as salt like Salt Lake is. This is um, more mineralized and diverse, um, and it has no inlet outlet. It's going to become a 
I don't know, dare I use the word a cesspool? No. Without the active involvement of each individual, Soap Lake could succumb to a fate that none of us wish to see. A place robbed of its magic, reduced to a mere shadow of its former self. The consequences of an action would ripple through the community and beyond, with far-reaching implications for both nature and those who hold Soap Lake dear. The very essence of Soap Lake, the healing waters, the vibrant community, and the cherished history would be at risk of slipping away, lost to time, and indifference. The once thriving flora and fauna that calls this place home would suffer, their habitats disrupted, and the delicate balance of nature irreparably disturbed. The preservation of Soap Lake is not just the responsibility of a few. It is a call to action for all who recognize its significance and cherish its healing legacy. The time has come for individuals near and far to lend their voice and make a tangible difference in preserving Soap Lake. By contributing a public comment, you have the power to amplify the collective voice and ensure that the concerns and aspirations of the community are heard. Your words hold the potential to shape the future of Soap Lake, to inspire action, and to ignite a movement for its preservation. If, if we're talking about this is uh, almost July 2023, uh, boy, please do contact the Conservancy or go to the Washington State Department of Ecology and type in Soap Lake Public Comment. Uh, our organization is, uh, we need public comment to support this lake becoming an outstanding resource water in the state of Washington. Um, we meet the criteria, okay? We meet the criteria, but if the public, the scientists that are out there, the scientists who have studied this lake over the years, started by Tommy Edmondson way back, he saved, Wash he saved Lake Washington yeah. in the Seattle area. Uh, and he's the first person who, we still have bottles of the water he collected. So we need um, the public to comment um, on the DOE site or on our website, thelake.org. We'll have a direct link and you can call me. My phone number's on the website. That's what needs to happen. We need the public to support this. Your contribution will not go unnoticed. It will become an integral part of the narrative, a testament to the widespread love and commitment to preserving Soap Lake. Beyond the public comments, there are countless ways to get involved. Join community events, volunteer your time, and support local initiatives that champion the cause. Together, we can ensure that the future of Soap Lake is not just a dream, but a reality. A testament to the power of unity, dedication, and the shared love for this extraordinary place. Yeah, we need to each individually take responsibility for the fact that we can do something about the deterioration of our climate changes. By getting involved, by raising our voices, and by taking concrete steps toward preservation, we can protect Soap Lake from becoming a forgotten, stinky marsh pond. Together, we have the power to ensure that future generations will inherit a Soap Lake that thrives, 
a place where healing, beauty, and wonder endure. Let us rise to the challenge, stand united, and safeguard the legacy of Soul Plate. Together, we can protect this extraordinary treasure and secure its place as a sanctuary for generations to come. The mineralization is a gift from the, from the earth herself. So I think today it still has powerful healing qualities. And uh, people know it. People still come here from a long ways away. I just don't know how bad it's going to have to get before it gets better. I'm hopeful that the public comment will see that um, at least some more detailed regulation um, and that will come with the approval by the state of adding this as the first um, outstanding resource water in the state. The responsibility for the lake, the city has a very limited amount of shoreline so there's a small part of access that is responsible, the responsibility lies with the city. The county has a large, you know, part of the shoreline, and the state has because there's a state highway that runs up, and the federal government does because it's a program mm -hmm. of the um, Department of Interior uh, that is the um, uh, reason why the uh, Department of Reclamation is here. Mm -hmm. So there's so many layers. Nobody, nobody um, knows who's responsible for what. I think the lake will heal itself if it's allowed to and not allow fresh water into it and not allow any more taking out of water from the lake or mud. Uh, that's a simple first step. And I don't know quite what the scientists would say today about what that is, but I, I wouldn't want to leave it to just the Bureau to decide that. Because their purpose, their primary purpose, the Bureau of Reclamation is mandated to get water to farmers. And we know what's happened with that mandate for the Colorado River. So there needs to be some balance to the Bureau of Reclamation at a federal level to feed people you know, um, to how important uh, a lake is to a community. Without this lake being here, um, I don't think Soap Lake as a municipality will continue here for very long. Um, I won't be around, you know, uh, for the cesspool that'll be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every morning I'm up on my hill in the backyard doing my meditation, talking to the spirit of spirits of the lake and it all, uh, the all, because I can't help being hopeful <laughs> when I even just see the lake. I try to stay away from fear. I tend to, Perry says I have a tendency to go there. And how I use my fear is to say, well, what am I afraid of? And that's what I need to run headlong into mm -hmm. to fix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fear is the compass. Yeah. Um, fear and love. Fear without love. Mm -hmm. And um, acknowledgement of... Um, 
uh, my responsibility to hold both at the same time um, to do my work in the world. <laughs>